Hi everyone, it's Daniel from the Pool Play Guys. Um, today is going to be a bit of a different video. It is about yarn. I know a lot of my videos recently have not quite been about yarn. So today it's, sorry about my lighting, the video is going to be about yarn. So this is a hints and tips video on how to work with hand dyed yarn because I know a lot of you love the look of hand dyed yarn but don't know how to deal with it or work with it um, and as a, a yarn dyer I thought why not make a short list of hints and tips that can get you looking into getting some hand dyed yarn. Um, I do apologise if I'm looking down. Um, I made my list on my phone so I am looking on my phone um, with all my hints and tips so I've come up with five hints and tips um, and I hope you guys will find them useful um, please let me know down in the comments if you like this video um, or if you'd like more of these videos because I will happily do more videos a little bit like this if that's what you want um, so let's get into it. So tip number one is to alternate your skeins. So yarn will come like this. Um, this is called a hank or a skein depending where you are. Um, so alternate your skein. So cake two of the same colour up and work one or two rows of each colour. Um, which is called alternating because even even if they're from the same dye lot, most yarn dyers the dye lots are the same for each time they upload on their website. So for instance, I have these on my website. All of the ones I have of this color are from the same dye lot. So alternate your skeins. Do one or two rows of each ball or cake. Um, this will prevent colour pooling because the colours can slightly vary. It's hand dyed yarn, it's done by hand. Um, a lot of work has gone into it and a lot of work will be going into it for you crocheting or knitting it up. Um, so alternating the skeins will, won't make it as obvious that the colours are slightly different. I do have a sweater um, made in my colourway Industrial Revolution that it started off with alternating skeins and then the person stopped alternating the skeins so you can see the colour pooling and the slight variation of colour. Um, some of you might want that, some of you might want the colour pooling, some of you might want to see the obvious change of colour, especially if you're doing a so faded where one's slightly darker than the other one. Um, so make sure if you, if you don't want it to look as obvious, alternate your skeins. So I have this one, but I might have another of the same colour that is slightly lighter or slightly darker. Um, so alternating these skeins will make it less obvious um, in your completed project. Um, the next one is make sure you buy enough yarn to do your whole project with. So if you plan on doing a sweater, buy enough yarn that the pattern suggests or if not a little bit more than the pattern suggests because I've had that before where I have bought yarn, I wanted to do something with it, thinking that I had enough yarn to do it um, and then it turned out I didn't have enough yarn to finish the project so I had to use a different colour or I had to use the same colour but it was a different dye lot so it looked completely different to the rest of the project so this is why you need to make sure that you have enough yarn to finish your project um, if you can and you can afford to contact the dyer and ask them if they could dye you that colorway all in the same dye lot so if you want five skeins of a color message the dyer and ask them if they can dye you up five skeins of that color um in the base that you want so you know they're going to be as similar as possible so make sure you buy enough yarn to finish your project 
obviously it's a lot easier if you're buying from a big box store like Walmart or Michaels or over in the UK like Hobbycraft or something it's a lot easier but hand dyed yarn is very expensive um, so it's going to be annoying if you don't have enough yarn to finish your project and you manage to get some more but it looks very different to the rest of your project so and a lot of dyers only do small batch small batch dyeing like me I only dye like 10 skeins at a time so if you want 10 skeins of a colour contact me and I can dye you that 10 skeins of that colour so they look as similar as possible um, wind your yarn in wind your hank or skein into a ball or cake um, because a lot of people don't know what to do with this um, because obviously it's very intimidating if you've never used hand dyed yarn before um, I know before I started using hand dyed yarn I had no idea what to do um, <laughs> uh, I didn't have a clue um, so it took a lot of research and looking on the internet of what to do with a, a skein of yarn and how to wind it up. I started off doing it by hand which is very annoying and takes a lot of time. Um, I wouldn't suggest that but if that is the only option you have then obviously it's the only option you have. So I'll give you a couple of hints in terms of winding your yarn so you can loop it you can hook it onto a back of a chair um or two heavy objects um and ask another per or or ask another person to hold it so it comes in a big big oval circle so you can get someone to hold their hands out like that and then you can wind the other side or you can hook it around the back of a chair if you don't have another person um hanks are always secured with I don't know if you can see it on this one so here that is a loop it's wrapped around the yarn in a figure of eight um, which keeps the yarn in place um, so make sure you snip them carefully because there is one end that is attached to the main skein of the yarn so it will unravel if you snip too much um, as I was talking about there is a knot usually it's knotted I think this is it here this is probably it here this is the knot that is probably attached to the main skein um, so it will then have once you snip that knot off it will have the two ends that you can unwind the yarn and then obviously you can wind it into a ball if not you can get swift and ball winder which you can get very easily off Amazon or your local yarn shop, a lot of your local yarn shops will have them, or your big box stores like Joann's, Michael's, places like that. Pre-wash your hand dyed yarn. This isn't always necessary, but I like to shout that out to people. I don't really mention it a lot. Um, really, I should include a little care card in my packages um, for people that buy yarn. Um, as people are usually scared of is bleeding um, it can happen I've had a couple of people say their colors are bleeding um, what what can they do um, pre-washing um, your yarn so if you are scared of it bleeding give your unhank the yarn give your yarn a soak in wool wash um, and yeah Give it a soak in wool wash and let it dry, air dry, don't put it in the dryer, it will ruin the yarn. Um, leave it out to air dry and then you can start working with it. Make sure that the water is running clean. If the water is running clean then you know there is no excess water in the yarn. Um, even I've had dye come out with yarn before um, and it's highly annoying so pre-wash your yarn. Um, yeah this will this will help you especially if you're working with lighter color yarns with it because obviously if you're working with lighter color yarns like white beige or even light gray you don't want to work your make your project such as a sweater or something and then you wash it and then it bleeds and then yeah you're gonna end up with a big mess so yeah you don't want that <laughs> um and I have one more for you guys 
Swatch and Wash. That's a good rhyming, isn't it? Swatch and Wash. Um, knit a small swatch. Or crochet, crochet or knit, depending what you do, or both. Um, make a little swatch of the yarn that you're working with. Um, and then give it a wash and let it air dry again. Um, this will give you a good idea of your tension or gauge um, and it's very very crucial that you do that if you're making a garment such as a sweater a cardigan if it's made to fit someone um, not so much if you're doing it like a shawl or something but especially if you're using it to make a sweater or something like that because you want to make sure that it fits the person properly um, so yeah, make sure that you're getting your gauge and usually making a swatch and then washing it and letting it dry will help relax those stitches. And that brings you into blocking. You don't have to block your projects. Um, but sometimes, especially if you're doing lace, if you're doing lace, you want to block your projects to um, relax those stitches and get the, the pattern out there because you don't want all your hard work to go to waste if you're making these really pretty patterns on a shawl or a sweater and it doesn't show up because it's not blocked. Um, so it's pretty much the same as blocking um, as it will relax those stitches, make it look more even, you can get a good idea of what, what it's going to look like knitted up or crocheted up and it will help you with your gauge. So. Oh, I have one more. I have six. I have six. I thought I only had five, but I have six. So, combine your brights with your calm neutrals, such as your your bright blues with your whites, or your greys, or your browns. Um, this will help your your brights pop more. So I like to do neons with black because I find that the the neons pop a lot more with black than they necessarily would do with white. Um, and it works great if you're doing colour work um, in a knitted sweater or something. Um, so working with neutrals with your bright colours always tend to go well but a lot of you crocheters and knitters will already know that anyway so that was just a little bonus one to add on to the end um, but usually the pattern will stay if the main colour is supposed to stand out as much as the as it, is, as it is or usually the pattern will suggest to get a nice bright colour against a neutral or you just do what you want it's your project you you make it look how you want to look that is the great thing about crochet and knitting is that it's so versatile and you can change anything up as you please. Um, but yeah, that is all the hints and tips that I have for today. If you did like this video, please press the like button. Um, put a little comment. Um, I can do more of these if you want or whatever you want. So pop a comment in the description below or not in the description. I do the description. Pop a comment in the comment box down below um, and put a little thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye.